guys. Welcome. We are here today talking about why data matters in affiliate marketing. And I'm going to need that. Thank you. So quick introduction real quick. Um, I'm Dave Stewart, Chief Technology Officer at Cake. Um, Cake is a marketing measurement software platform uh, focusing on advertisers, affiliate networks, uh, media buying, um, and all, really covering all of your tracking needs. I'm Kristen Pulver. I'm the Director of Affiliate Marketing of the Performance Media Division of Horizon Media. We are the world's largest privately owned advertising agency, and I'm excited to present today. Cool. So we're gonna, this is a quick uh, rundown of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, in terms of the specific data that you really should be paying attention to when it comes to affiliate marketing. Uh, first off, the demographic and technographic consumer data. Um, as you, a lot of you guys know, Google Analytics kind of gave us this information a long time ago in digital marketing. We're talking about the specific devices and browsers that people are using, the specific areas of the world and, and specific countries and regions that they're coming from, and having a good understanding of really your audience. Top of that, going into a little bit of purchase acquisition information, um, depending on specific verticals, that might be uh, like in a retail scenario, that might be knowing what your customers are actually buying um, in you know, insurance or, or finance, that might actually be having an understanding of what's happening after you've uh, given a, or passed off or sold a lead to a specific buyer. Um, and then moving on to Campaign attribution. Attribution kind of a, has been a buzzword now for a few years, but ultimately uh, kind of going into having an understanding of how you should be thinking about attribution, what it means, and really looking at back-end performance data, close rates um, if, if you're in a lead generation vertical, um, and ultimately uh, kind of, you know, if, if you're talking about like a subscri subscription platform, understanding how loyal your customers are, and then ending in talking a little bit about fraud and understanding what data um, you should be looking at when it comes to fraud and how you can and do anything about that. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the customer and executing an ad campaign. So this requires advertisers' dollars. So in an effort to spend those most effectively, you must create a strategy. So what we do is we focus on a test and learn strategy. The questions are, what do you want to learn from this, no, this ad campaign? And then what tests are you going to execute in order to achieve those results? So the first thing you actually have to do, we're going to switch these numbers here, is the first thing is, where do you want to find your audience? Is it offline media, such as TV and radio? Is it online digital media? Media, such as paid search, affiliate email, let's say, or maybe even paid social. So what you also have to understand is that whether it's online or offline, your audience is everywhere. So making sure that you understand that audience, you're testing out different calls to action, or better known as CTAs, and also testing out different messaging by each individual uh, media channel is very, very important to make sure you're actually able to capture that consumer in that experience in which they're living. And also, to Dave's point just before, make sure you're utilizing those data points from these individual media buying platforms, whether it be Google for your paid search campaign or different affiliate programs and tools that you're able to utilize to make sure you're tracking your back-end metrics so that it is um, informing your media buying decisions effectively. And so getting a little bit into the purchase acquisition data and being able to um, kind of take that data and apply it elsewhere and when, what other things can you even do with that data. Um, First off, just understanding your consumer interests, right? You, you have a lot of, you have traffic coming in from different publishing sources, from different media buying efforts, from different affiliates, uh, depending on what you're doing. And ultimately, having an understanding of what matters to them, um, what you're good at, finding the specific niches that you should focus more on, um, that's really, really important. And so again, getting into specific information about what people are purchasing, um, what uh, other websites they've been on to bring in, you know, data management platforms to get a under better understanding of what else those consumers are doing and where else you could potentially market to them. Um, and, and specifically marketing to them uh, elsewhere, you get into this concept of retargeting, right? And retargeting can be based on like email campaigns. So imagine that you're collecting their email address as, uh, in some sort of initial conversion funnel. What are you doing with that email address, right? The email address is very valuable, especially if you go, go about it right and get them to opt in uh, to you know, other marketing opportunities. Um, using that email address uh, to actually send them email campaigns and doing it smart and making sure that you're not overbearing when it comes to what you're actually sending them so that, you know, avoiding them unsubscribing ultimately. Uh, but uh, really leveraging that email to its fullest um, ad exchanges, and so imagine you know, the traditional concept of, of retargeting and the concept of display advertising is you know, those ads that just follow you around the web. 
Um, and how do they do that, right? Well, ultimately, they, they believe at some point that they know exactly what you're interested in based on things you've done in the past, right? And when you're capturing this, these, this conversion information, um, how you actually classify that is really, really important to be able to know how to target those specific people better when it comes to um, exchanges and being able to leverage, again, these data management platforms uh, with the kind of intender data on, on the consumers that you've tracked and, and knowing best kind of how to target them for things that might also be relevant to them. And then ultimately uh, gaining insights into your you know, audience segmentation from different sources. So as much as I was talking about um, having an understanding of what they're doing and what they're interested in, um, a lot of times that might be different based on the different publishing sources that you have, right? You might see that your Facebook media buys are ultimately, for whatever reason, leading to people that are interested in X versus your you know, ad buys that you're doing through um, you know, DoubleClick. Uh, wherever the specific sites that you are are, lead, are bringing you customers that are interested in why. And really understanding how those audiences are different and not necessarily just treating them as a whole, but ultimately getting into specifics within each of those channels um, and knowing exactly how to market to them differently, what they're interested in, that's really what separates people that are successful and not. You really have to get into that detail and get really granular and, and an understanding of how to approach those different audiences. So attribution. What is it? Right? At the end of the day, um, how, how, what you see right now in, in the market is you, you hear first touch and you hear last touch. Right? And first touch is this concept that whenever you know, a, con a consumer first interacts with your brand, whether that be as, as an impression with some ad that they saw on some site, whether that be an email that they, they got from you from a list that was purchased, whether that was you know, a billboard in an offline scenario or a commercial, that, that's the idea of like the first thing that they saw um, is really driving them ultimately converting or purchasing something at the end of a funnel and giving all the credit to that first thing. When in reality, after that first touch, there's probably lots of other interactions, right? They might get retargeted on you know, different sites across the internet. They might, you might now see an advertisement for them on Facebook. You might see, you know, uh, they might search for you on Google. Um, and ultimately those touches that are after the first one also matter. Versus last touch is, okay, at the very end of that funnel, the very last thing they did, we're gonna give 100% credit to that. And that's what you see a lot, actually. And what happens is, in a very, very common scenario, is that they see an advertisement on Facebook, and then ultimately, you know, there's retargeting that's happening across the web, and then they need to actually go purchase whatever that thing is that you're marketing. They search for that thing on Google, click on, you know, a, a, a CPC type advertisement, and you give 100% of the credit to Google. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because ultimately they only search for you because they already had interaction with you, or they already knew who you were. And so the last touch model is definitely flawed uh, for that reason. And so really understanding um, the full, what we call customer journey and all those different touch points and of engagement um, with, your, with your audience is really important. And, and factoring all those in and really designing an ideal customer journey is, is what you really wanna do and attributing credit to those correct sources. No, no, I, the, the word correct is really hard because there's no black and white answer as to how much credit each of those touches really deserves. And so you really have to understand your business and you have to really understand your audience and what that funnel looks like to, you know, to know how to most optimize um, what that looks like. But I would definitely you know, recommend looking at attribution models other than just first and last touch, whether, even if you just started with what we call linear, where like you give the same amount of credit to every single touch or getting into something more um, advanced like time decay where you give more credit to the ones at the end but you're still giving partial credit to others. Um, understanding that is crucial because um, really getting a, and I think Kristen's going to talk about this in a minute as well, understanding how much cost you're actually applying in each of these channels is really important because as much as you might be spending X in this channel, it's actually, and, and ultimately you see conversions are very low in that channel, it's possible that even though you know, conversions are low because of your last touch model that really it's, it deserves a lot more credit for what's happening. And so, yeah, ultimately any of these shared attribution models where you are giving credit to multiple of those touches is more ideal format. Okay, I just wanna ask a quick question. Are there any actual advertisers in this room right now who have maybe considered attribution or are actively using it? Okay, 
see a hand. Okay, a couple hands, okay. Um, so we actively use at the agency attribution for a number of our uh, agency clients. And it's been very interesting from a media perspective to really understand how attribution works cross-channel. So while I touch the affiliate side in the performance media division of our agency, it also interacts and provides full transparency across all paid media divisions. Everything from TV and other offline media to other online medias as well. So where as affiliate might sometimes be, or many of the times be considered a bottom funnel conversion point, you're able to really understand where that actual consumer's journey has gone through. Whether they were touched with an online video ad, whether they actually searched it on, um, you know, on um, Google or Bing, or if they were touched by any type of programmatic or retargeting display media online. Determining the number of touch points throughout the consumer journey while layering in those media costs from the advertiser gives us the ability to determine what a true cost of a conversion is. So as Dave mentioned, last touch is pretty much, you know, what's widely used within our industry. While we are paying pretty much all of, our ad, all of our affiliates on a last touch model, what I'm able to do with these attribution tools is say, okay, I might be paying them $10 a conversion, but based on these attribution models, we know that they're getting fractional credit for all of these conversions, therefore the true cost of this conversion through this particular affiliate is $30 or $12. And you can really determine how bottom funnel a particular affiliate's media is and optimize from there. So if that $30 true conversion is really above where my goal needs to be for this particular client, we can adjust his last touch payout to help counteract that and be paying them for the true amount in which my client is willing to pay for that particular conversion. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get a bit into client KPIs or key performance indicators. So at the agency, if I ever have a team member come to me or an, ad an advertiser come to me and say, is affiliate or performance marketing right for my business? The first question I ask is, what is that advertiser's KPI? What is their goal out of this ad campaign? And then what I ask is, are they able to provide long-term benchmarks or uh, touch points that they are having with these consumers or leads or sales that we're generating for them. So across many different types of affiliate marketing, you know, you have lead generation. So are they looking to actually close a sale? Do they have milestones? Frequently in the education space, you have multiple milestones. Are they setting an appointment with an admissions counselor? Are they actually applying to enter the university? That's a very a uh, common um, type of advertiser that has multiple milestones where you're able to make media optimizations throughout that process. Within retail, our retail clients, we're really able to understand what is that customer loyalty? Can they provide me feedback if we generated this first sale and paid an affiliate commission on it, are they coming back and purchasing again? Are they loyal to your brand or are they just looking for the best deal right now to make this purchase? Same thing with subs subscription clients. Many of us know if there's affiliates in the room, frequently you're paid out more than what the actual advertiser is taking in from the consumer on that first transaction. How long does it take for that consumer to be a customer before that advertiser is really making their money back. Having this transparency from advertisers to their media buyers, the people who are actually spending those ad dollars, is super, super critical to make sure that we're spending your money in the best way possible and doing our job to make sure that everyone's getting um, a successful level of uh, ad investment. Yeah, and from a visibility standpoint, uh, what we call cohort reporting is this concept of understanding when you actually made a, a media spend and ultimately how that affected um, that, that's those specific consumers that you acquired at that point, um, what they were able to do for you at, at over varying amounts of time. So imagine that I, I spend a lot of money on a, an ad campaign on Facebook. Um, I make, I bring in about 100 new customers. I have some sub sort of subscription model where I'm dinging them every month and ultimately being able to know that over the course of the year, I made X amount of money because of the money that I spent in January is crucial. And that type of reporting is sometimes hard to come by, but it's really, really important because otherwise, if you, if you really just factor in what you were able to do with, um, with those and how much money you ultimately you made on those consumers in January alone, that's not painting the full picture. And ultimately, focusing on publishing sources that are driving the long-term revenue and the subscribers that are staying in the longest is the most important thing to do. 
Okay, now that we've kind of discussed getting the data from the client's perspective, we're all here because we obviously have a stake in affiliate marketing. So that's, you know, that's the whole point of uh, this discussion is really understanding how do we take that data that's available to us, whether it's from our advertisers, from our media channels, and actually then improving the way we're spending our money with our affiliates. So I'm all for transparency, not just between myself as the agency and my advertisers, but also passing that along to my affiliates, as long you know, keeping in mind my clients' uh, goals and making sure we're not giving away too much uh, information. But the really goal, the goal is to create accountability. So you want to make sure that your affiliates are focused on the quality and the growth of your business, because we're not all here just to make money. We're here to make money and create long-lasting partnerships. So my biggest goal with my affiliates is to say, I will be providing you with this back-end data, and that back-end data is going to determine your future payouts, your future budgets, and our future relationship, not only for this client, but also other clients that might be coming to the agency for this type of business. So we want to make sure that it's very transparent that if we're going to be going ahead to provide those affiliates with these transparent back-end results from the client, that they're you know, that the client's able to give us, that they are very accountable for it, they understand what the um, the value is of their leads and we're making sure that we're increasing their payout if it's really good and we know it's of great value so we can continue to buy more and forge that, make that partnership that much stronger. Or if they're performing poorly, identify why. Is it because on a sub ID level, you know, we have some sources that just aren't really performing that well and by eliminating those we can really see uh, quality increase. This is how we optimize a lot of our media campaigns for our clients' best interest. Unfortunately, transparency isn't something you typically see a ton of in the industry, and that's something that I think we'd all like to see change. Uh, fraud. Um, first off, what types of fraud are there ultimately? And uh, the first I'll talk about is, is CPM and display fraud. So this is this idea that there are these fake impressions happening, or these um, there's ads that are being shown on pages that aren't actually shown, whether that's just super below the fold or actually hidden. Um, they're still uh, getting charged for and ultimately you're paying for every single one of those impressions even though no one's seeing them. That is one type of fraud. Uh, click fraud is a lot of times put in place by like botnets where you um, there's a virus or something across a lot of computers and ultimately there are bots that are actually make, making it look like they're clicking on links. It looks distributed so you can't really see patterns in that which is, make, makes it very effective when it comes down to it. Um, and uh, ultimately because of how high CPCs can be especially in some verticals that can hurt a lot. And then lastly, uh, conversion fraud uh, or even lead fraud, which is the hardest to enact because you kind of have to fake uh, a, a click or some sort of touch and then a conversion afterward. And a lot of times, that, if that data isn't real, um, there, whatever, if, if it's a lead gen type campaign and you're collecting the consumer's information, there's a lot of data validation type tools that can block that. But ultimately, you can see kind of what we call um, like phone book attacks where you have, they'll actually put in real people's information. And even on these performance-based models, which are theoretically less risky and that's why we like performance-based models over the CPMs and CPCs, um, they can still be effective in, in actually uh, getting fraud through. So what do we do about that? Um, first off, make sure you're doing something, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of tools out there that can help depending on your business, depending on what data you're collecting, depending on your actual engagement with consumers and how you're interacting with them. Um, you should definitely look into what tool makes the most sense, whether it be data verification if you are collecting lead data, whether it be just basic um, uh, what we call pixel level tracking and understanding of like who these anonymous consumers are and what else they're doing, um, whether it be just looking at the basic proxy, whether they're going through some proxy server, which is kind of a way that um, uh, these, these people can like mask where they're actually coming from. Um, all of those are very, very important um, because ultimately, uh, you know, you never want to have those hard conversations. As well, as an affiliate, you never want to have here that, hey, you know what, you, I, I, you were told that you were going to get paid a million dollars this month, but actually, we found out after the fact that there was, you know, half of it was fraud, and so you're actually making half of that. All of your planning that was based off that is now shot. Um, that's not ideal whatsoever. And then on the other side of things, as an advertiser, you don't want to find those things out um, late in the game, and so. Um, any way that you can counteract that and find that in place and really weed out the bad publishers or the bad specific sub-IDs within those publishers is, is very important to do. Um, Chris had already talked about it, but just transparency in general. Um, just making sure that when those things are happening that you're very open with that specific data to the affiliate and as an affiliate that you embrace that information and don't take that as um, necessarily a, 
um, an, a bad thing. I think it's just an opportunity for you to improve the actual um, traffic that, that, that you're sending. And then uh, understanding kind of your, your true business value um, is going to help you uh, really weed out what, what traffic is good and what traffic is bad and, and not just accepting you know, the, the industry standard 10 to 20 percent of you know, traffic being fraudulent. Um, really getting past that is, is what we, I think we all want to see. Okay, so we want to go ahead and provide you with a few takeaways uh, that you can get about data in this perspective. So attribution, really understanding uh, your publishers and the traffic patterns. It's really, really interesting. If it's something you haven't spent a lot of time researching, I really recommend that now's the time. It's becoming much more influential in our business um, and not just within affiliate, but all of digital marketing as a whole. So I would definitely recommend that you uh, spend some time learning about attribution in more depth as it's very, very interesting and it's very influential in the way I think ad dollars are going to be spent over the upcoming years. Um, audience identification and targeting, you know, let your, let your results, this is true, let your results tell the story, you know, with attribution layered onto that, it's really going to um, tell a true story, but you're understanding your audience, understanding how they're finding your business, and making sure you're targeting those specific media channel messages the right way based on how that audience is going to be uh, receiving those messages. Um, advertisers, I can't beg you more than to really be transparent with your agencies or your your AORs because it's super, super important to let us know how your how your business is performing because without that data, it's it's really hard for us to determine how our campaigns are performing for you. And and every agency person's goal is to make sure that their advertisers are happy with the performance. So without that back end data, it's really, really challenging to be able to do so. And then finally, as Dave mentioned, fraud. Fraud could be talked about for years and years and years in this business. You know, it's really about being vigilant. It's really about accountability and making sure publishers know that, you know, there, there's no way around it. If they're going to be providing you with fraud, then, you know, it's kind of cutting them off at the, at the legs and making sure that, you know, this is unacceptable for your brand moving forward because allowing that and not, provide, not having that accountability just leaves yourself susceptible in the future. Cool, so I, I think that's it. We wanted to leave a few minutes for questions. So do we have any questions? Not all at once. <laughs> Does anybody actively use attribution besides me and Dave <laughs> in their ad campaigns? No? Personally, from the real world perspective, like, you know, um, as opposed to like the technology side, yeah, I think it really does make a difference. I have a number of clients who use it and they're in completely different um, industries. And it's really interesting to see how the different media channels impact a consumer's sale. The way I've been using it is in e-commerce more than lead generation um, across my, you know, scope of clients. Um, but, and you notice significant differences based on the partners, which I think is really, really interesting. You know, using different um, programmatic partners versus affiliate partners versus paid search partners, you really see great variances. Yeah, and from, a, I mean, from a low level perspective as to actually how it works, um, I think it's, it can be similar across specific industries and verticals, but the, the specific things that you find out and, the, and how you should approach what you're going to do with that data is absolutely different. Um, when it comes down to it, understanding that if someone's looking to buy a car or get, uh, you know, refinance their house, they're going to go about that process very differently in terms of what, how they're engaging, whether, who they're reaching out to, what sites they're going to, than someone that is signing up for a loyalty pro program with Target, right? It, it's it's going to be a very, very different process and understanding that and understanding kind of what touch points are relevant within that process based on your specific business use case is very important. Dave, you talked about the flashbacks for, for the touch model. Is that something that your affiliate networks use each day or is it really letting them know how you pay out? And then does that affect whether or not affiliates want to work with you? Like, do a lot of them prefer a first touch or a last touch or a time to pay model? Yeah, I would say, well, first off, affiliates have not been very 
quick at picking up shared attribution models and really accepting them. A lot of that is because they want simplicity and payouts. Um, that's something at Cake we're actually trying to change just by making it easy um, from a technology perspective, like actually trying to break it down and make it easier for people to use and understand. Uh, but ultimately, no, there, it hasn't been growing a ton with an affiliate. As of right now, like Kristen talked about, it's more of at least understanding what, what's real, even though you're not necessarily paying out on it yet. And so we would actually call that like a payout model is like first or last touch versus what we call a credit model would be based on something more shared. Um, but versus first or last touch, yes, that, ha that should be communicated by an affiliate network. Um, that should be a very big part of the initial conversation when you know, there's any kind of affiliate recruitment. Um, we actually see pretty even between first and last touch. I know Kristen said that she's um, working with last touch with hers. Um, we see that that's pretty even, but ultimately um, we do encourage, as much as affiliates may still want that very basic either $10 or nothing CPA. Um, we really want to provide tools to make sure that you, you, even though that's, you're paying them on that, we can start to see where the true uh, value is coming. And then with that data, ultimately advertisers are going to drive the change, right? If, for affiliates to accept this, advertisers are going to have to say, nope, you, know, you have to accept the fact that you're going to get a partial payout um, for, to work with us. And the really big advertisers are going to have to start that. And I think by exposing that, those advertisers to this type of data where they can actually see how disjointed, you know, what they're paying versus what the, actual, the true credit should be. Um, as soon as they can see that, we hope that ultimately they will f kind of force some of those changes on affiliates because we do think that affiliates actually gain from this. We think affiliates can make more money if they're doing, if they're actually doing good by their advertisers um, by getting at least partial pieces of, of specific conversions that they don't get at all today. Yes. You would have to, well, if there's a network in between uh, an advertiser and an affiliate, the, adver the advertisers, ultimately the network or the advertiser could make that decision. Networks right now don't really have enough clout, I would say, to push that. I think the networks are going to have to be pushed by the advertisers, and the networks will then take that and probably push it to their affiliates in a more realistic um, progression of events. Um, but again, I still think we're, we're a little ways away from that, but I, I believe it will happen. To add on to that, um, it is happening more at the, as Dave mentioned, at the advertiser level. So, in executing these types of campaigns based upon, you know, attribute, you know. At results from these attribution partners is, as I mentioned in my example earlier, we're paying out a flat $10 last touch CPA. But when we measure those results by layering on our attribution tools, we're realizing that the true cost for affiliate A is $45 and for affiliate B is $20. So we know that if we're paying advertiser, I mean uh, affiliate A, $10 last touch, but our true cost is $45 by the number of touch points they had to have in our digital marketing journey, um, that becomes a red flag to us. Okay, so we're paying them $10 last touch. If our goal is really to get a true CPA after attribution of $20, maybe I need to cut their payout in half. And that's what we've been doing. We've been having these individual one-off conversations with affiliates, so we're hitting our advertisers' goals. Because in reality, they it's no surprise to them that they're more bottom funnel, that somebody's coming to them because, oh, I have that coupon code and they're gonna come here and convert with that coupon code, you know? Um, and that's the kind of conversations that we have with our partners on the affiliate side because we have to have that level of transparency in order to hit the advertiser's goals. And that's And the more that that critical. happens, where affiliate specific payouts are being even decreased when the, this kind of visibility happens, the affiliates are gonna be more open, in my mind, to a partial payout in general on those other conversions that they are playing a part in but didn't get any credit for. Right, exactly. Any other questions? Cool, I think we'll probably stick around for a few minutes if you have anything you might discuss uh, individually, but I appreciate the time, guys, thanks. Thank you.